Hello and welcome to our channel, Cheating Exposed. Today, we're revealing another story to uncover the truth behind the lies. So, let's get started. In April, when I was 12 weeks pregnant, I found out that my F28 husband, M28, had recently started cheating on me with a girl at his work, and I still haven't gotten over it. We've been married since the summer of 2018, but we've been together since the summer of 2014. It's nearly our nine-year anniversary now, and I am currently 30 weeks pregnant with our first child. I always thought that if my partner ever cheated on me, I would be out the door in a hurry because it's the kind of disrespect I could never stand for. However, I never thought it would happen to me, let alone after I had put 8.5 years into this man. Plus, we have a house, two cars, two dogs, a cat, and a baby we both wanted for many years at that point. I know I am more sensitive right now due to the pregnancy, but it's now August, and I am so tired of waking up hurting every day. After I found out, I confronted him, and he admitted that he had started seeing her and, at the time, had done so three times. I was in my first trimester, and he knew how sick I had been, literally spending all day, every day, throwing up, my morning sickness lasted until around dinner time, usually, and sleeping. He has a job that has always kept him pretty busy, but he would always check in with me throughout the day. I work from home and am self-employed, making much less money than him, but it was something we had discussed in depth after the loss of my first pregnancy, and we agreed that me being home and dealing with the house and pets was something we should try. Plus, we both wanted me to be a stay-at-home mom for whenever we did have a baby, so while I make less, it was something we fully agreed on together. When he would check in, it was always so sweet, he called me in between meetings, on the road driving, any time he was free, and he would text me to announce his safe arrival every time he had to go anywhere. It was never a burden that I asked for him to check in, because we both just naturally wanted to talk to each other during free moments in the day. That's how our relationship had been for the entire duration. There was no asking at all, really, it's just how it was with us. I gave him another chance when I confronted him, because I was so blindsided. It didn't make sense to me, and now it still doesn't but I was 12 weeks along with a baby I had been wishing for for years, we struggled with conceiving after our loss years ago, and I had a vision in my head of our family that I couldn't let go of. We agreed that he would go into work and end it with her the next morning, which he didn't think would be an issue because it was just physical and they had no feelings involved. Let it be known that this girl knew about me, and I had stopped in at his office many times for lunch visits with my husband, and he had photos of me on his computer a desk, so there were constant reminders that I was real for the both of them. He told me in later conversations that before the affair started, she would joke with him that I'm too hot for him, and she planned on stealing me away. She apparently is by with a heavy lean towards women, and when my husband would talk about her before the affair, I was told she was a lesbian that he and all the guys at work, besides one, found highly unattractive. What happened when he ended it with her is, I guess she took it all right, left, and then a few hours later came back and begged him not to leave her. He told me that she was crying and clinging to him, and there was something about abandonment issues that I truthfully did not care about, because I was his partner of almost nine years and carrying his child. He told me he had ended it though. Next, he went to get tested, there was no crossover at all while this was going on, and he was clean. He showed me all test results, as this was an important stipulation, obviously. For the next month, I watched him leave every morning and broke down as soon as he left, sometimes begging before he went to work for him to call in sick and stay home with me. I was a wreck. We had a vacation planned from months before coming up in May, and I somehow thought it would be good for us to get away and just be the two of us. I was counting down the seconds till that trip, keeping everything I was going through just to myself and quickly deteriorating. In that month, I lost 22 pounds because I could not eat, and every time I did, I would throw up. My husband watched me in agony, a complete shell of who I once was, trying to grow our child and not being able to stomach food literally at all. It got so bad that my whole face broke out in what looked like hives from how hard my body was trying to throw up when there was nothing left inside me every day. Like little blood vessels popped all over my skin from sobbing and puking all day. 
This was back in May. I left him the next day, after I confronted him again, and he admitted that he never actually stopped. He said he tried, and his story was half true, when he spoke with her, she came back crying and begging. Then, according to him, she forced him into an empty office where she tried to get physical with him. He promised me that he stopped her and shoved her away, but that she had gotten close enough to touch him before he pulled away. He swore nothing happened that day, but in his mind, it was over because, in our initial conversation, I told him I would give him a second chance, but if he did this again, I would leave him. He counted this as doing it again, even though, when he explained it, it sounded more like she crossed the line while he was saying no, rather than him cheating again. But he didn't see it that way at the time, he thought I'd leave if he told me, so he figured he might as well not stop, assuming I'd find out and leave him either way. Fast forward to August, and I've been living alone since May. I left him the day after I found out the second time, staying with my aunt for a few days with my dogs. I eventually came back to the house and kicked him out. It didn't seem fair to me that everyone but him had to suffer, me being pregnant and trying to manage two six-year-old dogs who were stressed and stopped eating, plus our cat who was deeply bonded to me and suddenly left alone. All of our animals were confused, and it was really hard on them. Meanwhile, my husband, the one who caused all of this, was the only one not dealing with the fallout. Now, I'm thirty weeks pregnant preparing to sell our house and move back into my dad's place with my three animals and my daughter once she's born. I'm still so, so hurt. I really believed this man was the love of my life and my soulmate. All of our friends, who I've spoken to about our separation, I can't afford a lawyer until the house sells, and honestly, I break down every time I think about divorce, have been absolutely shocked. It's so out of character for him. We were the couple everyone looked up to, the couple that could get through anything. My family is just as surprised because of how wonderful he was to me for 8.5 years. He was so emotionally supportive and sweet, and I like to think I was to him as well. We face so much together, losing my mom, who was my best friend, losing our first baby, and he even went no contact with his mother. We were each other's rock through all of those hard times. And now I'm carrying his daughter, who I already love so deeply. I know he hurt me and changed me as a person, but it's so hard to forget the years of happiness we had together and to realize that it's all over now. The frustrating thing is, I would probably take him back if he came to me, said all the right things, made the right promises, and convinced me he meant them. But instead, I'm living alone, growing this baby and taking care of the animals we chose together, while grappling with this trauma all by myself. Meanwhile, he's practically living with the girl he cheated on me with. Every time I drive past his apartment, her car is there, sometimes even when his isn't. He promises that she doesn't have a key and that when our baby is born, she won't get in the way of him being a father. But honestly, that's hard to believe. She hates kids, babies, and even pets. Clearly, she's a real gem, especially for someone who knowingly got involved with a married man. It's been months, and he knows he's hurting me. We're still publicly married, which just adds to the pain. His family has no idea about any of this. Only our mutual friends and my family know the basics of what's happened, though I haven't shared all the details I've written here. I should mention that I confronted the girl face to face just once. When I told her that she tore my family apart and took my daughter's father away before she was even born, she laughed and shrugged, looking so smug about it. I mention this because I know some people will say not to blame the affair partner, but to focus on my husband, the one who broke his vows. But honestly, I blame them both. They both knew what they were doing, and she seems to revel in the power she feels from this situation. He often tells me he doesn't want to end our relationship, but that right now, he isn't right for me. He says he can't be who he was because he messed up so badly that he doesn't know how to fix it. But then he goes on to say that monogamy just isn't for him, even though he's living with her, essentially recreating the life we had. It hurts so much to think about how he's already replaced me. A 20-year-old girl is sleeping beside my husband, sharing meals with him, and sitting in his passenger seat, while I'm left here in this agony. This just isn't how my life was supposed to go. 
I wish I could stay firm on hating him because trust me, I do. I've had countless hours over the last few months where I've made sure he knows what he did to me and how much I despise him for ruining the woman I was before this betrayal. But I also still love him and I want the family I thought I was promised. We struggled to get pregnant for nearly three years and the month I finally did, I told him, if it doesn't happen for us, it doesn't happen. I want to be a mom, but if it's not in the cards, I'll come to terms with it. I know I can find fulfillment in our relationship without a baby. Then, shockingly, I got pregnant, and I felt like everything was finally falling into place. We were going to be happy together, just like we had always daydreamed about, but now it feels like a nightmare. I'm really unsure how Reddit works, and I know this post is long, so I doubt anyone will read it. I don't even know why I'm writing it here. I know he's in the wrong, and I don't need anyone to remind me of that. I also don't want to be called names for still loving this man who has disrespected and mistreated me so immensely over the last four months. Our anniversary is coming up, and I'm desperately lonely in this quiet house that I now have to pack up all by myself. I wanted a place to put my feelings. If you comment, please be nice. I feel stupid and weak as it is. I've been with him since we were both barely 19, moving straight from my childhood home into an apartment with him. I've never spent a single adult year alone, and I'm just so sad all the time, unsure of what to do. I try to go no contact, but we're selling a house, and I'm in my third trimester with his baby. I hate him, and I hate myself. I want him to wake up and see what he's doing, but I doubt he ever will because he's avoiding accountability for his actions. It's not like I could ever trust him again, either, but now I have to co-parent a child with him for the next several years, and I don't feel strong enough for any of the future anymore. I just don't understand how he could do this to me. Well, folks, that's all. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.